Grace to you and peace from God our Father and our Lord and Savior, Jesus Christ. Amen. Dear brothers and sisters in Christ, our text for this 17th Sunday after Pentecost is from our epistle reading, James chapter 3, verse 17. But the wisdom that is from above is first pure, then peaceable, gentle, willing to yield, full of mercy and good fruits, without partiality and without hypocrisy. Here ends our text. One has to admire some of the technological advances that we are seeing in our time. Much wisdom went into the planning and, to, and the and execution of the first all-civilian flight into outer space. Yes, SpaceX did that this week. Launched a, a four-person crew up into space and no astronauts were aboard on this three-day flight that circled the Earth higher than any person has been up in space since 1972 in the Apollo program. Four amateurs, four amateurs in space without anyone to guide them, just self-guiding um, uh, computers on board and, of course, the professionals down below going at 22 times the speed of sound, in-flight guidance systems, and, and there they were, enjoying the beauty from above. Yesterday, this four-person crew, they called the Inspiration Four, parachuted safely into the ocean and were picked up by a recovery vehicle. Outside the capsule, you could see it was visibly scorched, for it had endured temperatures of of up to 3,500 degrees Fahrenheit when they re-entered into the Earth's atmosphere. But the passengers were kept cool inside, and their mission also to raise $160 million for cancer research was raised for St. Jude Hospital. Yes, a lot of testing went into this SpaceX flight right here in our Rio Grande Valley. A lot of testing of rockets going up into the air, sometimes not coming down so well, much Wisdom and planning were made by Elon Musk and his company that enabled these four travelers to enjoy this amazing three-day view of Earth from above. Are you interested in maybe taking a rocket ship ride up into space too? Well, as amazing as this all sounds, you don't have to leave Earth to have the greatest wisdom of all, because this greatest wisdom of all comes to us today through God's Word. Yes, they've never made a rocket ship yet that can reach up into heaven. They never will. As inspired as they were for this spaceship flight into outer space, God's inspired Word teaches us the one true way that we can reach heaven through Jesus Christ, the wisdom from above. Yes, I'm not talking about something from below here on earth that, that, uh, that you can get a new Cadillac now and have hands-free driving, it's fully automated, and uh, it's called Super Cruise. Now I'm talking about the wisdom from above that comes to our earth and comes to us this day through His Word. For God's Word is the wisdom which all people need for our daily journey and our, and our journey that will eventually reach the heavens itself when Jesus returns. There is no flight to heaven except through Jesus Christ. The civilian crew of the Inspiration Four actually got an amazing glimpse of the craftsmanship of Jesus, of the wisdom, as he calls himself in Proverbs 8. For Jesus, the wisdom of God is, is as we hear in Colossians chapter 1, preached but to Jews as a stumbling block and to Greeks foolishness, Christ crucified, but to those who are called both Jews and Greeks, Christ the power of God and the wisdom of God. So Christ calls himself wisdom in Proverbs chapter 8. And he says, I, wisdom, dwell with prudence and find out with knowledge and discretion. By me, kings reign and rulers decree justice. By me, princes rule, and nobles, all the judges of the earth, and of course the richest billionaires too. Riches and honor are with me, wisdom says, enduring riches and righteousness. 
My fruit is better than gold, yes, and fine gold, and my revenue than choice silver. I traverse the way of righteousness in the midst of the paths of justice. So we read from Psalm 8. Wisdom holds the riches that we, are, that we need for everlasting righteousness in heaven and graciously gives them to us through his word. I have, I have been established from everlasting, from the beginning, before there was ever an earth, says wisdom, says Jesus. When he, God the Father, established the clouds above, when he strengthened the, the fountains of the deep, when he assigned to the sea its limit so that the waters would not transgress his command, when he marked out the foundations of the earth, then I was beside him as a master craftsman, and I was daily his delight, rejoicing always before him, rejoicing in his inhabited world. And my delight was with the sons of men. Yes, his delight was with his creation that he made perfectly. Whether the four civilians on the Inspiration Four realized it or not, they were seeing the inspired work of the master creator, Jesus Christ himself, wisdom from above. Yes, Jesus' delight was in the sons of men. He made them perfect, without cancer, without viruses, but his creation turned on him, and sin entered into the world. The devil tempted men with these words, For God knows that in the day that you eat of it, your eyes will be opened, speaking of the fruit of the tree, and you will be like God, knowing good and evil. And since man's fall, there is a war that wages against the wisdom from above. Our epistle reading describes it clearly. But if you have bitter envy and self-seeking in your hearts, do not boast and lie against the truth. This wisdom does not descend from above, but is earthly, sensual, demonic. For where envy and self-seeking exist, confusion and every evil thing are there. So we read from James 3, 14 through 16 in our epistle. James, of course, is writing to Christians. He's writing to you and to me. He began chapter 3 with the address, My Brothers. And last week, we heard how Christians are in a continual battle to control that small member of our body, the tongue, where blessing and cursing come from that same tongue. May this never be, James says. He continues to describe the battle against our new spirit in, in Christ that is waged by our old Adam within us and the earthly, sensual, demonic world that is around us. The world's wisdom is envious and self-seeking. Adam was envious of God and thought only of himself that he could be like God. Because of sin, death entered the world so that the crown of God's creation would not live forever, but was cursed to die. So James states the inev inevitability in our epistle reading that awaits each of us, whether we are paupers or whether we are billionaires. For what is your life? It is even a vapor that appears for a little time and then vanishes away. James 4, verse 14. Yes, contentions that arise between Christians are always because of self-seeking. James continues in chapter 4 of our epistle, Where do wars and fights come from among you? Do they not come from your own desires for pleasure, that war in your members you lust and do not have? You murder and covet and cannot obtain. You fight and war. Fighting among church members, in families, between spouses, is a result of following the worldly wisdom of putting oneself first and not loving one's neighbor, one's, one's partner, one's family, one's church member as oneself. The prayer life with God of a self-seeking person also suffers, James says, because one asks God for things that are harmful, of which the world seeks. James says, you ask and do not receive because you ask amiss, that you may spend it on your pleasures, adulterers and adulteresses, he calls them. For those who, who fornicate are those who follow false gods and seek to be wedded with the false gods of, of this world. Do you not know that friendship with the world is enmity with God, James says? Whoever therefore wants to be a friend of the world makes himself an enemy of God. Where man's sinful wisdom has always failed, though God's wisdom is steadfast and gracious. That is good news for us this morning, also from James. As great as our sins are, God's grace is greater. So he says in chapter 4, The Spirit who dwells in us yearns jealously, 
but he gives more grace. Therefore, he says, God resists the proud, but gives grace to the humble. God yearned for us with such great love that he sent his only son to be our savior. He was sent from above, wisdom from above, to become a true man. And he saw in him, and we saw in him, that true wisdom is, as James says to us, a wisdom which is first pure, peaceable, gentle, willing to yield, full of mercy and good fruits, without partiality and without hypocrisy. That is our Savior, Jesus Christ. Jesus was not self-seeking, but self-giving. He yielded to the, to the anger, to the, to the tortures of men. He yielded and endured our punishment for our sins by His passion and death. And He did so because He is full of mercy and compassion. He gave His life for all people without partiality. He wants all men to be saved. So Paul tells us in Romans chapter 5, verses 20 through 21, but where sin abounded, grace abounded much more. So that as sin reigned in death, even so grace might reign through righteousness to eternal life through Jesus Christ our Lord. Wisdom is first pure. It is pure in its love for us. We can absolutely count on God's wisdom that created the world perfect and through the sacrifice of Jesus Christ recreates a new man in us and gives us faith. And the believer in Christ is graciously given wisdom's righteousness and purity through faith. In baptism, our sins are washed away and we are given Christ's righteousness. We stand pure in the eyes of God. We eat and drink Christ's very body and blood this day, this morning. And it gives us forgiveness, forgiveness of our sins, of our enviousness, forgiveness of our self-seeking. He mercifully gives to us this morning full forgiveness, pure, unadulterated. So James says in the opening chapter, every good gift and every perfect gift is from above and comes down from the Father of lights with whom there is no variation or shadow of turning. James chapter 1, verse 17. We receive Christ's perfect gift of love in the Lord's Supper this morning, which forgives us all of our sins and strengthens our hearts to follow Jesus and, and serve Him in peace and gentleness and mercy towards others. That's our view. That's our view from above, given to us from Him who came from above. For when we receive Christ's wisdom, we see the world with eyes of mercy and compassion as He sees it. Thanks be to God that He sought us with His mercy. Yes, Jesus touched down from His flight into, into this world, born of the Virgin Mary, incarnate Son of God, the wisdom of love that the sinful world needed. Thanks be to God that His wisdom continues to, to come to us this morning through His Word, through His law, and through His Gospel, convicting our hearts, humbling us, and then graciously forgiving us. So James continues in our epistle reading, in verse 10, humble yourselves in the sight of the Lord and He will lift you up. He will lift you up from the depths of your sin. He will lift you up and give you peace and joy and strengthening of your soul to serve Him. He will lift you up on that last day and you will literally float up in the skies with Him. Literally float up into heaven and live with Him in righteousness and purity forever in heaven. So we hear from 1 Thessalonians 4, verse 17, Then we who are alive and remain shall be caught up together with them in the clouds to meet the Lord in the air, and thus we shall always be with the Lord. Amen. And the peace of God, which surpasseth all human understanding, guard and keep your hearts and minds in Christ Jesus. Amen.